surprised there haven't been riots in this country. But I'm not surprised when you consider how handcuffed we all are with fear that we'll be arrested, and we'll lose our homes, we'll lose our dignity, we'll lose our names and our reputation by the fascist police state erected under Barack Obama and the legal, the legal eagles who are ready to strike the minute we do anything that protects us. How come they're not afraid in Europe? How come they're rioting in Europe to keep the Muslims out? How come they know what will happen to their country? How come even liberal Denmark said no to the Muslims? Why? Because they know that they're a small country and they will lose their identity. They'll lose their national identity. You cannot bring in a culture of people who see the world in such a different way that they will fight with you every day of the week. No alcohol? Are you kidding me? No alcohol in Denmark? No alcohol in Germany? That's what's going to happen. You've got a Muslim flight attendant suing right now saying she suddenly uh, converted and she will not serve alcohol on an airplane. Well, why'd she take the job? She doesn't like it. Let her go fly for, for Emirates Air. This is what I mean by the legal profession, the lowest of the low, that they will sell their country down the river. They'll stab the military in the back. They don't care. Their agenda is prominent. So who is the only one we have to hope for? Donald Trump. That's why everyone's out to get him. As I said, he wants to make America great again. That's the logo on his hats. And look at this 10th rate failed academic, Bernie Sanders, surging against Hillary, whose slogan should be make America hate again. That's right. Bernie Sanders should put out hats. Make America hate again. When, when I'm president, the taxes will be 125%. That's Bernie Sanders pitting black against white, Hispanic against white, gay against straight, straight against gay, man against woman. That's who's surging on the Democrat side. Make America hate again, Bernie. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. I think people can trust me to fight for them and to fight for their families. I have a long track record of standing up and really working hard to help people solve their problems, to have better right, lives. We got the story. I we have did a Republican it debate tonight. And whether you're a Democrat or an Independent, whether you hate Donald Trump because he stands for America and you hate America, or you're confused, you don't know who, what to think, one thing you have to observe, she won't debate anyone. What has she got to hide? That's the real issue today. That's why I took the counterpoint. Anyone could talk about, I could have done this show. What would you ask Donald Trump or the other candidates tonight if you were on the debate, if you were uh, the moderator? That's sort of radio um, 101. Now, I'm not asking you that. I'm asking you something else, which is what the American people should be asking why is it that the number one candidate on a Democrat socialist Islamist ticket, known as the Democrat Party, being blocked from debating anyone? Why is there no competition inside the Democrat Party? What has she got to hide? So I invited you to call this program. And uh, the lines, of course, are jammed. People are furious that they won't ask one question of Hillary Clinton. So let's begin with some of the callers. In North Carolina, WAAV Radio. Sean, what would you ask Hillary Clinton? Oh, my question would be, her last campaign was based on a 2 a.m. phone call, and we all see how she handled that during Benghazi. She watched it on closed circuit TV and then came up with a lie that it was a movie that started all that. What could she tell me to convince me that that's not going to happen if she's elected? That'd okay, my- good question. Let's move on. 30 seconds or less. I'm not going to belabor this. Let's go to New York City. Rick, WABC, you're on the Savage Nation. If you could get Hillary Clinton to come out from hiding, if you can get Debbie Wasserman Schultz to get out of the way and stop being the fishwife that she is and get this candidate of the Democrats to debate another Democrat, what would you ask her, Rick? Go ahead, please. I would just simply ask her, Hillary, why do you always find yourself at the center of controversy and adversity, and I just put it to her very bluntly and see what her answer was. I could give you the answer. It's an easy one. The Republicans are causing the controversy because I'm such a great champion of poor, the women, gays, minorities, and immigrants. Exactly. There's the answer. That's the one that Debbie Wasserman Schultz and all the lawyers with big glasses and curly hair in New York would write. All the boys who went to NYU who grew up on on uh, Red Diaper Dopa Baby, Doxy, all those who went to uh, communist summer camps in the Poconos 
and learned to hate the American flag. All the boys that went to Harvard and then went out to destroy America as quickly as they could. Let's go to the next caller. WJR in Detroit, one of the great big signals. Sean, no, sorry, Shane on WJR. What's on your mind, Shane? What I would ask Hillary is, with your husband's history of sexual assault, your complicity in participating in destroying his victims, how do you find the nerve to act as if you're an advocate for sexual abuse victims? <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I got to laugh because these questions are quite poignant. Wouldn't you love to see Hillary debating? Okay, who would be on the stand? I don't know. Okay, you've got the commie Bernie Sanders, the man with the crumpled suit who looks like a failed community college teacher uh, from Hoboken, New Jersey, with a tuna fish stain on his lapel. Okay, so he'd be up there. They'd have to get him a uh, phone book to stand on, but he'd be there. Then there'd be this guy O'Malley. I don't even know who he is, but he'd be up there. He's making noise that he wants to run. Then they'd get old Joe Biden to stand up there. I'm sure he could tell a few... Uh, jokes and make some embarrassing statements. So let's say there's three, four people up there. Who else could they get? Maybe Dick Gephardt wants to run. I think he's still around. Al Gore could be up there. I'm sure he'd like to be president. Look how far he's gotten with the global warming racket. They they could get another Democrat up there. Somebody, I, I don't know. There'd be some, let's have a vigorous debate. Let's show the American people we've got nothing to hide. And I'd love to hear the questions like this being asked. So let's see what the other people who have called the show uh, would ask, and I like the way I'm doing it, 15 seconds, 20. Ron, WFTL in Fort Lauderdale, what would you ask Hillary Clinton if she was available for debate? Yeah, I'd ask her if uh, Monica Lewinsky would be setting a new standard for women, and, and does she support that standard? I don't quite get it. I mean, that's supposed to be sarcastic. I don't think it makes it. WABC Lewis, what would you ask Hillary Clinton if you could? Yes, Michael. I would ask her to play the to, to play the kindergarten game, which they did to the Republicans, and raise and ask Hillary. Raise your hand if you would if you would um, nominate uh, and stand back any Democratic presidential nominee other than. All right. Thanks for the call. When I hear someone say, "What would you ask her?" That's the end of it. He never should have gotten on. I mean, we need a limited. A minimal amount of, uh, let's say, articulate callers. Jim, hello, Jim, Michael to Jim. If someone says Axe, don't put him on the show. The only Axe I want to hear is uh, Axel from Guns N' Roses. Let's play uh, Axel from Guns N' Roses on the Savage Nation while we're getting people to ask some questions that they would ask Hillary Clinton. And I'm going to blow the topic off in a minute and go on to something else. Just play heavy metal and no questions and no talk. That's the level of uh, political debate in America. Could you imagine CNN going to the old porn star Sharon Stone and asking her what she would ask the Republicans? It's astounding. Or Susan Sarandon, a piece of guava on the jungle floor that rotted 30 years ago. It's not only newly formed, fallen guava on the jungle floor. Susan Sarandon is guava that fell to the jungle floor 30 years ago and rotted 30 years ago. They go to her now and ask her what she'd ask them. Why don't you just ask Dustin Hoffman what they'd ask the Republicans tonight? They could, could probably get him out of a stupor. That's how far it's gone. So what would you like to talk about? Debbie, WJR, what would you ask Hillary Clinton? I'd ask her why just a few years ago when she was a senator, how she was totally against illegal aliens and how she said that our company should not hire them. You played the clip, remember? I do. Yeah, I'd ask her that, why all of a sudden now she's so for them when before she said she was against them. What changed well, the, uh, the answer is obvious, because without the illegal aliens, the Democrats have no chance of winning. So could you imagine that the Crescent News Network goes to he Jane Fonda, Mark Cuban, I guess he calls himself Cuban, Bill Nye, the fake weatherman, Bill Crystal, the fake Republican, Susan Sarandon, uh, guava on the jungle floor, Sharon Stoner, and questions they would ask the Republican candidates. And by the way, to make matters worse, Obama warns GOB debaters. He came out today de warning them. I don't think we have the sound yet. Obama came out and attacked all the Republicans, saying there's nothing patriotic about talking down America. You hear this? Here's a man who ran America off the road, took the wheels off the nation's truck, and uh, the creature says that there's nothing particularly patriotic about their rhetoric. Can you get the sound, Robert? I'm sure you can get it. It's on CNN. 
Here's what your president said. Despite the perennial doom and gloom that I guess is inevitably part of a presidential campaign, look at his thought like he's above it. America is winning right now, Obama said, at a meeting of the Business Roundtable today in Washington. America is great right now. We can do even better. It's great right now? Are you sure? And he goes on to say, you wouldn't know any of this if you were listening to the folks seeking this office that I occupy. Well, that's a loaded statement. Occupy. That's about all you're doing, Obama, is occupying the office. You're like a member of Occupy, uh, the Occupy movement. He goes on, the great leader, and says, in the echo chamber that is presidential politics, everything is dark and everything is terrible. They don't seem to offer many solutions to the disasters they perceive, but they're quick to tell you who is to blame. Well, Mr. Obama, you're wrong. Barack Obama, you're wrong. They're offering many solutions to the disasters that you have created. Donald Trump wants to build a wall with Mexico. That's a solution. Donald Trump uh, agrees with Michael Savage that we need tariffs on goods coming from China in order to bolster American industry. That's a solution. Then Obama goes on to say, there's nothing particularly patriotic American about t talking down America, especially when we stand as one of the few sources of economic strength in the world. That's another lie. We are an economic uh, midget. The reason we're being outmaneuvered by China is because Congress has sold us down the river to China and Mexico. If we were to put tariffs on Mexican goods, for example, if we were to, may I, I'll give you another solution that I had in one of my previous books, and it's not an off the wall, you know, just throw a bomb out there to see what happens idea. Let's say we have 30 million illegals in America. Remember in my book, Trickle Up Poverty, I said to you that we should demand that Mexico give us one barrel of oil for every illegal alien in America per day. I'd say make it every month. Mexico's rolling in oil. We don't have to import oil. That would be 30 million barrels of oil a month or a day or a week, whatever you want, in order to uh, compensate us for the high cost of housing, feeding, clothing, medicating illegal aliens, schooling them. That's 30 million barrels of oil. We wouldn't have to import any oil. That's, that's a solution. So we're going to get that sound for you on the Savage Nation so you can hear the great leader trying to attack the Republicans before their debate without he himself debating anybody, anywhere, anytime, without Hillary Clinton coming out from behind the shadow of the fishwife, uh, Debbie Wasserwurst woman. Debbie Wasserw what's her name? Debbie v Wasserwoman Schultz. This is the Savage Nation. If you care to join the conversation, the phone number is 855 400 7282. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800 B U I C O I N. And I ask myself, I see these Vikings with tattoos stoned out of their minds, dancing to Metallica. And I ask, why don't they defend their nation from the invasion? Why don't they riot? Why don't they throw their leaders where they belong, which is in prison? I ask, where are our muscular people in America? Why are we not fighting back? How do we let these anti-American, these anti-Americans do this to us? Now, tonight the debate is happening. And if I were Trump's advisor, I would tell him, don't debate. See, this is what I would do. I'd pull a reverse maneuver. He would gain more traction by not showing up and having an empty spot than by being there and being ripped apart by the Lilliputians. The Lilliputians are going to uh, tear him apart. He'll do very well, but he would do better to not even show up. He would say, I'm now the leader with a 32% rating. I'm bigger than all of them. I'm not going to be uh, fall into the trap of the liberals, the liberals set up for me, and let my own party tear me apart. Let them tear each other apart. And that's the end of it. I would, I would say, don't go, Donald. You don't need him. You're doing well without him. But we're not at that point. So now CNN is hosting the debate because the RNC wants Donald torn apart. They want Donald torn apart for obvious reasons. The conservative grassroots love Donald Trump. The conservative grassroots know that Hillary Clinton won't debate because she's got too much to hide. So CNN now makes a parody of themselves and they say, 
What would celebrities 